everyone. What if you could have it all? <laughs> now that's possible. Even if it's in baby steps, our beautiful guests today, and you know them, they are power couple pickleball heroes, um, and we're having a, a, a just a follow-up on all the beautiful things that happened to them since the last time we spoke a year ago. So sit back, grab your headphones. You're going to want to watch this because you yeah. can have everything you, you want. Right? Hello, Hi. Nico and Christy. How are you today? We're good. We're How are you? Really good. <laughs> We're good, thank you. Um, so, what do you think before we go into our conversation? Do you think you can have everything? And have you have you got everything slowly, slowly from the last time we spoke? What what is well depends on what you call everything. If you're well, every, that if depends you're, on you, right? Yeah. It's different for everyone. Yeah. If for me, everything is. Um, being uh, satisfied and having love and being complete and having purpose. And in that case, with a good, solid uh, spiritual uh, light inside, yeah, you can have everything. But if you're looking for monetary value or to, to complete, uh, to be the best in something or to have the best car or the best, the most money, well, you'll never be satisfied. At least in my, that's my understanding. Yeah my 55 years on this planet and purpose is what makes us happy and having and forgiving each other and having each other and loving each other. That's what completes us. And that's why we're happy. And also wanting to spend all our time together. Um, um, we, we've done everything before, like we've done the, the, everything everybody else has done the, the, the guys trips or the girls night out. That doesn't work for us. We we know the time is limited on this earth, and you're lucky if you find someone that you love and that you could uh, cherish. And uh, our only thing that we're missing in our lives is having our children close to us. For me, having my son in my life is a big deal, and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing with pickleball. That's why I shunned the money and the, that life in Chicago of what I thought was a life, but it was really selfish. So I could come out to Florida and find purpose. And um, I did. I found purpose in pickleball to take that to Greece and make people happy and show people there's another way of living your life uh, other than, uh, you know, uh, showing off or um, uh, losing yourself in food or in habit or in drinking or in that lifestyle. Uh, pickleball is another option to find joy. And when we take it to Greece and we show people pickleball, that's the pure satisfaction of it. And by doing so, I've quit smoking, I've quit drinking, I've quit doing my bad habits. I found God. And I think those characteristics will one day show themselves to my son and say, oh, my father has changed and he's a good person. Not that I ever thought I was a bad person, but my priorities were a little screwed up because I am a, a well, kind of both of us are sexual abuse survivors. And when you have that as a young child, when you have uh, people that are twisted and kind of lost themselves and they include you in their uh, twisted life, uh, it was hard for, it's hard for anybody to break free of that. But because of uh, my spirituality and God and believing in God and, and being saved by Jesus, uh, I was called, I heard the calling and, uh, I, I know now, and I think we mentioned it before, um, we don't let our, our uh, what, what, is, what was I said? The, my, I'm not a, a, a victim anymore. I take my, what happened to me, and instead of being uh, upset about it, or, or like I used to be, I used to do drugs or drink because I couldn't deal with it. Now I don't let it define me. I let it re refine me. And instead of defining me and saying, oh, I, this bad hat thing happened to me and I'm just going to go do this, this and that. That's who I used to be. And I think a lot of us uh, put that pressure on ourselves. And we do bad things because bad things happen to us. But you shouldn't let it define you. You should let it refine you and get stronger because of it. But again, I'm blessed that I have a great person to live with. And I also have a shining light inside my soul called God guiding me 
And I think I mentioned this before in other uh, days where don't let the light outside of you be brighter than the light that's shining inside of you. And if you let God shine inside of you, you will see that forgiveness is easy uh, and repentance is easy and doing the right thing is easy. And then all things will fall into place. Uh, and I, I like saying this statement a lot. It took Moses 40 years to cross the desert that was only a 10-day journey. So it's not always about the destination. It's about the journey. So when you're on this journey, you have to understand that you are have a purpose and that if you trust God and we trust God, all things will fall into place and you will have it all. Because when you say, do we have it all? Well, I think we have love and we have happiness and we have pickleball. But we, we, are, we do miss our children. We're doing this. We do these broadcasts and we play pickleball and we get up every day at 4 o'clock in the morning and we train every day. Um, even though we work eight-hour shifts now at Home Depot, <laughs> it's, it's probably the hardest thing we've ever done. We, we, yeah, it's it's hard, now, it's we... The hardest thing we've ever done is to work eight-hour shifts and still get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and not give up. Yes. Way. Well, that's commendable, um, Nika. Sorry, I'm going to uh, just, just jump in for a moment. Please. That on its own is commendable. And also to be able to to say, you know what, I need to go to Home Depot just for a bit and work eight hours. Yeah. So even uh, that, it's um, it's commendable because a lot of people say, well, oh, you know what, this is beyond me. I'm not going to do it or whatever they say. Uh, so I'm saying that it looks like you've broken so many fears as well since we met because your whole, I must say, your whole energy is so different, um, Nico. If yeah. we go to the very first episode we, we did, it was like frenetic and now you're so much calmer and the two of you are so much connected and, and, and it's oh such a beautiful vibe between you as well. Yeah. So um, this is really, uh, it's, it's really beautiful to see. Now, and, and, and so that was the question. Now, I, I know that you mentioned, um, because you did a, a, a video for me, thank you for that, that uh, you, were, you were at the um, US Open, right? Oh, yes. uh, when in Naples, yeah. uh, and you were um, tell us a bit about what happened there because that's a huge, a huge thing for you as well, and that's a huge growth point. Yeah, as well. You weren't, you weren't there as uh, you didn't play, right? No, not no. Athens. So we we played last year, and and for us, so this was our one year anniversary, and because so, last year we we met Noah, who is a director yes. who's making documentary pickleball film, so we and then we made. We met Marion from the Tundra uh, enthusiast, and she has since then she's made an eight part uh, docu series with Nico and Kyle Yates, who is the former number one uh, oh, pickleball wow. player. And I make a few cameos in there, which uh, they made this series that just came out. And so she had us go to the U.S. Open to do some interviews, uh, to promote things. And so it was it was actually a very nice experience just kind of seeing because we're getting to meet people that are actually, the series only had come out like a week before. So it's she's just starting to promote it. But people are recognizing us. And it's amazing how many people have similar past or stories. stories. And so it, they connect with this. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you you seem to meet so many people that pickleball really has this connection that they they meet people it's a whole group of friends it brings this joy mm -hmm. they start trying to get healthier and and so i think when we go and we did this it just once again makes us go we need to be in greece more because mm -hmm. we need to be pushing this wanna, not we, pushing this sport but we need to be bringing the sport to more people yeah. um and in Greece, you know, I'm, I'm proud to say they're getting like three courts, you know, and the, the numbers are so crazy because when we were just in Naples, uh, they have 63 courts, I think it is, in, in one just, location. Just there. And so wow. we're proud that we're getting like three Sweet. old basketball courts and we're going to get lines down yeah. and we, we're going to start getting people um, to play a little bit more and they've worked on the federation and yeah. so some great things have actually Possible happened Olympics in 2032 too. there's a lot of things going there are a lot of things and it's working. slow, slow and, but you know because because we we don't have the financial backing that mm -hmm. a lot of people so 
I think when you don't have that, you know, we call it the grassroots and we just, we give what we can when we can. Mm -hmm. And hopefully um, this, in this docu-series, uh, we're, we're, we're praying, hoping. we're praying we're that, something, two. that something comes of yeah. this and that helps mm -hmm. us uh, continue on uh, this sure. journey. But uh, because of the war, we really think uh, our May trip didn't sell out. Yeah, we, we had to we, drop so our we had to cancel our May trip to Greece. Because of the is Israel, what's happening in the crisis there. But our September trip is, is uh, uh, selling out really well. We have a, a senior professional who's one of the best in the world, Dave Weinbach and his wife coming. So that's happening. So we're excited to go in September. We're excited to push Greece out there. And we see the value in pickleball because pickleball is more than just a sport. Uh, Soccer is a sport. Baseball is a sport. Basketball is a sport. Those are really good sports that you could watch on TV. But <laughs> they're not really good participation sports, meaning you don't see a 60-year-old guy go play basketball with his five friends every morning, every day. He might play basketball. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it doesn't happen every day. You don't see 11 friends join up on a Saturday to play soccer. That's a very rare thing to do. You see people in their 50s, 60s, and 70s to do that. So pickleball is a very unique sport where it's a, mostly a participation sport. They do have it as a professional sport where you could watch, but nine out of 10 people prefer playing as opposed to watching. Well, that's really good because for health reasons and for social reasons, this is a really good sport. You have 50, you have, I think the estimated values now in, in, in the world are over 35 to 50 million people are playing pickleball or have played pickleball. Wow. Where we started in 2018, there wasn't even a website dedicated to pickleball. So in the five years that going on six, that I've got this calling that I believe was from God to play pickleball, to take it to Greece, the sport has grown exponentially We've gotten better exponentially. I have a professional teacher who teaches me for free because of the, 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 the documentary that we're doing. And again, like Christy mentioned, we're trying to get season two bought by Hulu or you, uh, Netflix or someone. We're praying for that because that and would since enable we last, us. We, we actually played in the Florida, the, senior. the Florida senior games in yeah. our age division, and we got a bronze medal. So we oh, are congratulations. <laughs> that is amazing as well. Um, I just want to go back and just remind the viewers, please, there'll be a, um, a playlist with all these these um, the other the videos that we did. But I just have to mention how this is so exciting because in one of the videos, I think it was the second one, or the, it doesn't matter which one, one of them you said, I remember Nico saying, you know what, all I want is, come on, God, I just want someone to, to teach me. Yeah. <laughs> and not so long after that, someone came in. So I just had to mention that because it was always like, whoa, be careful what you wish for. It's so beautiful. <laughs> the, 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 when I first started playing in 2019, 2020 actually, I didn't start playing until officially till 2020. COVID. COVID's what started our complete transformation in pickleball. We both lost 30 to 40 pounds. We both quit smoking two packs a day. We've changed our life dramatically. We get up at four o'clock in the morning, we run. But not only did a guy teach me, but the guy was number one in the world. <laughs> yes. that's, that's crazy for someone it's amazing. Number one in the world to be your teacher. And he's taught us great because we did win bronze medal and we were three points away from going into the gold medal match, we were winning. And because of our lack of um, experience in tournaments, we lost, but that's going to change in the future. And the thing is, these, these tournaments are expensive. They're not cheap. There's seven, eight, nine hundred dollars just to join for two sports, for two, for two people. And then you have the travel, which is another thousand dollars. So you're looking at two, three thousand dollars to travel around the country per tournament. So we're very blessed to live in the villages where we have some of the best players in the world or players that have played for a considerable amount of time who can teach you and you can get better. And again, this wasn't my idea. I was not a tennis player or today I was playing someone who was very good and used to be a professional handball player from New York. These people have been doing this their whole life or tennis players who have yeah. been training. We were doing drugs and partying <laughs> and we were, cause we were lost. We were like, we were, we were, we were lost sheep 
Okay, that's all I could say. We weren't wolves. We definitely weren't wolves, Christy or I. We were sheep. And we were lost and we were in the wilderness and we didn't think anybody cared about us. And we were going down the path of uh, least resistance. We were going, we were doing things, uh, what I say, low hanging fruit. We were, we were choosing to do things that were easy and uh, because we didn't believe in a higher power. We didn't believe that dreams can't happen. I didn't believe that after 50, you could start living. And this is why we do what we're doing. Our goal is to go to Greece and not only show special needs kids and, and kids that this is an option, but really my goal is to show people in their 50s 60s and 70s and 80s and even 90s and even a 100-year-old person that this sport is for you. You can do it. You can have fun. If you're lonely, if you're alone, well, this is something that will get you friends. If you're out of shape, this is something that will drive you to get into a better shape. And, th and this sport works because everybody I speak to that does play it gets uh, emotionally well, connected, gets uh, we addicted. We see amputees, amputees, like that was at the U.S. Open. There were amputees, they do wheelchair. wheelchair. I mean, there's no excuse there's for really people no not excuse. playing. There was a, people with it's oxygen fun. tanks yeah. playing. You know, wow. <laughs> but, but it's, it's that not, is amazing. But I'd like to say just one thing. We've got a, a guest that I had on the show, um, and you probably saw he commented on one of your videos. Yes. Uh, yeah, he's Devin, he's in a wheelchair, and he it. plays. Um, yeah. And he's like... We saw that, and we were excited because this is, again, pickleball is a very unique sport. Like, people will be, if you ever on um, social media, uh, people will always be like, oh, this, this is, uh, that sport's for people who can't play tennis. Well, maybe you're right. Maybe it is. But the truth is, it's it's a participation sport. And the reason yes. I, I focus on that is because nine out of 10 sports are uh, wa watching sports. So in other words, you put the TV on and you'll watch the Super Bowl, but you would never in a million years say, hey, let's go out and play football <laughs> in your 50s or 60s because you're going to get you're going to get hurt. <laughs> but pickleball is a sport where. You don't think about getting hurt, even though you can get hurt. You could pull a muscle. You could, um, I've seen people break their wrist or fall up, uh, fall backwards on their head. I've seen people get hurt, but you don't. And think that's because they think they're 10 years old because, again. And because they think the that they can do more than they should, you know, when you you're know, starting out. So I always say, don't go backwards. Just, you know, that, that's nothing's the, worth getting injured. Correct. But mm -hmm. it, as long as you take those precautions, yeah. it's a great sport for so it's, many It's the people. lower... What what I guess what I'm trying to say is I never expected to be in golf and pickleball. I, I've heard the sport for 10 years. If people saw previous shows of yours that I'm on, um, we we came out here just to have fun, to forget about my best friend's death, because that's a big part of life. Life is all about um, ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And at my lowest, when I was at my worst, I was down and out. I, I hated my job. I smoked two packs a day. I was 30 pounds overweight. I was not enjoying life at all. Um, money wasn't making me happy. Liquor, drugs, alcohol, sex, none of those things were making me happy. But then my best friend dies next to me. So I've had quite a doozy. And then my son tells me, I don't ever want to talk to you again. So I was at my worst. And then my father-in-law says, let's play pickleball. And I was like, yeah, right. I went and saw it, and it changed my life. It, it was, I, I'll say it again. It was if God said, this, here, this is recess time. Enjoy your life. And it's not just me. Anybody who picks up that paddle. I, today, I was playing pickleball with a guy who is about maybe 275, 300 pounds. He's oh. in his late 60s. He just got out of the hospital because he had a, double, uh, a, a severe heart attack. And he found pickleball in New York. He's lost over 100 pounds. He's out of the hospital, and he's making a comeback in life, basically because of pickleball. Yeah. And, and that's what pickleball does. It gives you the joy, and the in the in the courage to want to do something where you you can. And they want to get back on. We actually out we actually saved somebody that had a heart attack. On yeah, the we've done that. We've had people uh, had heart attacks. Well, like a month ago, yeah. one of our players one that of our we friends. play with, we had to, you know, get the 
Yeah, uh, it's, we it's, had to get the machine and we had to shock him. And the, yeah, we did the, the MP. <laughs> but, but all he wants to do is get back on the pickleball. Court. It's it's a unique sport. And, <laughs> but and, uh, that's amazing because sorry, like, sorry, Nico, I just want to um, interject here in a, a moment. It sounds like it's got everything because you've got you're doing the 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 exercise. You've got the community. You've got the, um, you've got the connection. You're making friends, so it's good because there's a lot of people that are are suffering from isolation. You know, yeah, they well, they're alone true. and they don't know where to go. You know, everything's so so scary out there. So yeah. that is a beautiful thing. Sure. You know, yeah. where people are welcome in to to change their lives, perhaps. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think anybody, I think anybody could go out. Like, I mean, go to your local. You know, there are public courts. Yeah. There are it's easy things, but you know, you yes, We're there are to so many dreams. things. There's so many places to go, and you can find beginners. And um, you can go and take a class, and you're yeah. gonna make friends. Definitely. I mean, Definitely. I always say, Nico and I, I don't think we make friends as well, you know. But there's, I just, well, yeah, on it, the it, internet, you just see it, it, there's just such a camaraderie a, yeah. of people playing this sport, the sport and enjoying brings it. People together and so many people just talk about, you know, that they they were lonely or they needed something, or and so for us. Um, I think it's also an interesting thing because we're we're spouses playing. And you do see a lot of people that talk about that they can't play with their spouses. And it's difficult. It is difficult. But we're, but you we're glad because our whole thing is about spending time together yeah. and um It's and fun, doing but I'll tell you one thing. It is very difficult to play with your spouse, but there's nothing more rewarding than playing with your spouse and playing well and learning together and winning together. And that's going to yes. happen because three years ago, we, we would lose consistently together. Now we win consistently together. <laughs> we, lose, we do lose, but it's it's sporadic. Whereas we, we're we're getting on that level now, where we're getting better and better and better. But that shouldn't be the drive to play. Winning or losing should never be why you do something. It's it's the benefit of doing something. But if you enjoying if you're enjoying it, if you're having fun, that's the benefit of it. And 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 in Greece, it's very important that my Greek brothers and sisters and friends and cousins and and my in the Greek community, understand how important it is to get pickleball in Greece because it is a 100% participation sport, meaning anybody could play. There are levels from 2.0 to 6.0 or 7.0, professional. There are levels. So if you, it's fun, it's socially, uh, like you said before, it, it will, if you're at home and you're isolated, this is an incredible opportunity because there are not a lot of things that you can do with people, especially that's healthy for you or that's good for you. And this is not only that, but it's free or very inexpensive. So again, we want to push this, the, the envelope. Um, and I also need to point out that I had a debilitating obsessive compulsive disorder where I was just tormented and I believe in spirits, I believe in good and evil. And I believe that the evil, sadness, sickness, uh, laziness, all in, in uh, um, lustfulness, all these things that crawl into your brain and tell you you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not strong enough, you're not, nobody loves you, nobody likes you. These are things that I don't only say to myself, everyone says this to, me, to, to themselves. And when you go out and you play pickleball with people like people like you, yourself, you find joy. And joy is the greatest medicine for someone who's unhealthy. Joy. Joy and sunlight. You'd be surprised by standing, sit in the sun for three hours and play pickleball. And you'll be surprised how happy you are. Today, <laughs> yes. was, today it was, and I'm, I'm blessed because I live in Florida and today was a beautiful day. It's been 79 degrees all day. Wow, that's nice. playing pickleball. It was just amazing. So I can't stress how great this sport is. And yeah, there's other sports that are fun: ping pong, uh, tennis, basketball, or what. There's a but, but pickleball is something that anybody, like anyone, can pick up and play. And it's outdoors, or you can be played outdoors. It's inexpensive, and you can go by yourself and make ten friends on any given day. And that's our goal. Our goal is to build courts in Greece, name them after my friend who passed away. That's my goal. That's my dream. I want to name the Michael Beppes courts. My first courts that I ever built in Greece are going to be after my friend who died of 
of cancer, who was my best friend in the world and who was a big reason, inspiration among my other friend who passed away uh, of a heart attack, who was Augie De La Rosa, who, who that's the reason why we moved to Florida. And these are things that I want to do to honor my friends, because when they passed, I wasn't in a good situ good place. And they would pray for me. They would be talk to me. And by because of their deaths, I was able to take something negative and turn it into something positive. Instead of getting worse, I said, enough's enough. I'm going to go and get better. And of course, I found God and God showed me pickleball. It's, it's only I, because I love this. I, I love the sneaker. So, sorry, one more moment. I just want to um, I just want to ask you something while you were speaking. I was thinking about how the two of you have grown together through pickleball and through this love for pickleball, because like I said, even that we can see the difference between the two of you from the first time we, we spoke to now. So how much has it grown? Have you grown together and it seems like you're becoming more and more powerful within yourself. So you really are the, the, the power yeah. couple, right? I think so. And, and I would say um, because of our faith, you know, we've been yeah. on such a spiritual journey. Yeah. And so sorry, about sorry. a year ago. Oh. Sorry about my computer's <laughs> dying. <laughs> okay, I'm listening. <laughs> um, about a year ago, we changed churches. Yeah. And now we oh. have a whole nother kind of mission just yeah. because because coming from Chicago, um, I was a hairdresser for years. Uh, I have a lot of gay friends. And so getting into, you know, finding God and finding Jesus, now all of a sudden I thought, oh, we're part of this group. And now all of a sudden I found there's so much, I, I hate to say hate, yeah. that is coming from a, re, you know, I think, uh, a, a religious side. Mark, Mark Twain yeah. said, Mark Twain quoted that if Jesus was alive today, he, he, he wouldn't be a Christian because yes. of the hate that Christians generate. But Christy and I are blessed that we found a church that is all inclusive, that accepts everyone, that no matter who you are, where you walk in life, you are welcome here. That's our model. Meaning if you're gay or trans or bi or black or white or Jew or Christian or Muslim or red or purple, and if you believe in God and you want Jesus in your life, you're welcome. There is no but. Boom. <laughs> and here, here you want to, and, and if, anybody, if anyone ever sees the previous post we've done, I, I talk a lot about miracles, how God has shown us signs, like the sign from working at the, uh, the place in Florida in, in Kiss, Kissimmee, where the gentleman's name was the same as. The, the fake name that Kyle Yates uses. I won't go into detail, but all these little things. But Christy, when I met her, we were so far away from church, so far away from believing in God, so far away from trying to do the right thing, to go to church and yeah. to try to be we better have people. The discipline we we didn't have discipline. We were doing um, low-hanging fruit. We were using sex and drugs and, and alcohol and cigarettes as our vices and and depending on that to give us a good time and now we get good night's sleep we get up at four in the morning we pray and we we work out we go to church gratitude, so, gratitude. I, I think waking with, up with, every day and and starting your day with gratitude yeah, gratitude it, it just changes the way that you look upon about about life yeah I, yes. they always say i i think i look at everything as a miracle now she does you're either <laughs> you either but, believe in miracles or you don't and I feel sorry for people wanna, that aren't looking and just seeing how beautiful the world is. And Christy's easy yes. to do that with her. But yes, here's, I agree here's, with you. Here's, yeah. here's one. I'll leave this note. This is a, we were both um, kind of reeling in. We, we, our um, situation financially, we're hoping to get better because uh, that's the one thing that we always could use. Obviously, anybody could. Because we want to get our kids to Florida. We want to bring our kids to Greece. I want to get my son back. I want to show him that I'm great. But uh, when we change churches, about a year ago, uh, I, I went, I had a spiritual, uh, um, I, I don't know what to call it. I, I didn't know uh, at a crossroads because I was at ch this church that I became born again at. I became a born again Christian there. And I, I believe the pastor was a phenomenal human being. But then I heard hate in his voice when he was talking about homosexuals and gay people, uh, how they're not a lot of welcome in the kingdom of heaven. That they can be loved by God, but not accepted by God. And I, I don't understand that. I don't believe that Jesus 
or, or God makes mistakes. And I had this come to Jesus moment where I prayed for a week and I wrote a quote. This is a true story. This is a miracle. Christy was a liturgist for the first time. Like when I met Christy, we were not church going people. So to think that we would be at church on a Sunday together 10 years ago, I would have thought you were crazy. <laughs> we were doing parties at my house that were not for God, okay? 24 hour parties and things and stuff. I'm not proud of it. I was lost, but now mm -hmm. I'm proud. So someone asked Christy to be a liturgist and she chose this past Sunday, which was also her birthday. And a year ago, I had a come to Jesus moment. I wrote on my phone, Acts, the, in the Bible, Acts 8, 3, 8. And that's Philip baptizes the eunuch. And the reason I pick that, because eunuchs are sexually different. They've always have been. From the beginning of time, there has been eunuchs. Mm -hmm. uh, you could call a eunuch a transgender. You can call a eunuch a, a, a LBGTQ, definitely from that category. So for me, when I was searching through the Bible to find something that says um, Jesus means love for everybody, well, that was the one quote that struck me. And also in Isaiah, he talks about eunuchs, how they will inherit the kingdom of heaven. But the reason I put this in my, my I put it on my Facebook page because I felt so strongly about that. I have a connection. Like maybe I'm going to baptize people one day. Maybe I have a connection to... to to spread the gospel through pickleball. But the real miracle is I put that on my phone a year ago and I never thought about it again. So the pastor gave Christy a quote from the Bible to read in front of everyone at church on Sunday. And guess what quote it was? <laughs> wow. Eight, three, eight. Yeah. So wow. one week later, as we're having this I wouldn't say we're having turmoil, but Christy and I started this new job at Home Depot. We're working a lot of hours. We're we're making a we're, we're building a new store. We go there uh, three it's four days a week. It's, it's hard, hard labor. It's hard labor. Yeah. We're we're, we're <laughs> moving we're moving thousands of pounds of of, uh, of product every day. And it's strenuous on your back and your knees. And so when you're getting up at four in the morning and you're training, you want to give up. We, I I want to give up. I want to say I yeah. quit. It's not going to happen. Yeah. I'm not going to yeah. be in the Olympics. It's a crazy dream. It's not going to happen. And as soon as I say that, Christy goes, oh, I'm reading this in the Bible. And she starts reading. And I'm like, that's that's on my phone. Wow. Well, God is there. God is real. God is listening. And we're is, just is, waiting for we're God's just timing. waiting for God's timing because <laughs> we Sometimes know. You go, speed it up. Speed it yeah. up. <laughs> we, that's we, not we, how we work. I guess to wrap <laughs> things up, we, we believe wholeheartedly that God has our best that's intentions yeah. and best interests. But on his, again, Moses took 40 years to do a 10 day run. It was a yes. 10 day journey that took 40 years. And, and, and Moses never even got to the promised land. Yes. Okay. So he, he, but he got, he got his people there. And that's what I believe in now, because, and I have to stress this again, because I think, with all the stuff that's going on, we were doing a lot of TV shows. We were doing the movie. Christy and I never stressed the fact that the reason why we were doing drugs and alcohol, the reason why we were lost in that world, because both of us, including myself, we, we were sexually abused as children. And it's a very difficult process without God to handle. If you don't have a, um, a good, a, a, a solid foundation, you will crumble and you will do drugs and you will get lost in alcohol. Uh, being, I was molested by someone that was part of close to the church, uh, it, part of my, in, not in my part of my family, but in the interior of my family, he was allowed to, he was, he was uh, someone who was trusted. And when you, when you hold that inside, you start, uh, it's, it's like a, it's like a evil, it's like a dark passenger. Yes. It's like a evil spirit. And it, and then it starts dragging you down and it lets, it starts defining you and thank God for pickleball where I found some joy and then I found God. And then I found that God had that planned all along, meaning that 
one event led to my divorce and led to my drugs and my alcohol, but it also led to my wife, my love of my life, my soulmate, and it led to us playing pickleball in, in Florida and in Greece. So I started making it refining. And if the one thing I could push to um, sexual abuse survivors, uh, uh, people who are obsessive compulsive, people who are uh, have this dark passenger, they're uh, depressed or uh, bipolar, I truly believe that with the power of joy and God, you not only can overcome it, but you will overcome this darkness. Because I never thought, if you would have told me 10 years ago that I'd be going to church every Sunday, quoting Bible verses, playing pickleball, which I didn't even know what pickleball was 10 years ago. I, I never played racket sports. I, if you'd have told me I, 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 my goal is to be an athlete and to help people in Greece, I would have thought you were crazy. And if you would have told me I would have quit cigarettes and I would have lost 40 pounds and kept it off and I would have stopped doing drugs, I, 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 I was looking for something. And yes. I know there's other people there. I'm trying to bring this by these, these talks and by the sport and by going to Greece because I know there's somebody that's on their knees right now saying, God, please help me. And I know pickleball is the key. It's not going, it's not the miracle cure. Not, there is no miracle cure, but there are keys. And I believe pickleball is a key to start having joy. And with joy, you have happiness. And with happiness, you start looking at life differently. And then God seeps into your life. He calls us yeah. and, and he calls us. And when he calls us, it's caused us through joy because uh, everyone suffers. You suffer. I suffer. We've all suffered. I don't think anybody could sit there and say, oh, I've suffered more than you. I have lost my son in the terrible divorce and I haven't talked, spoken to him. But there's other people who have lost their children to death, to cancer, to accidents. So I'm blessed that he's still on this earth and I have a shot. And I believe that we are all here to help each other out. Yeah. We are not here for us to condemn each other. That's why it's, it's important to go to church. There's enough goodness to go around, yeah. like to wish that, you know, the best for everybody. Correct. And and that's, I that. think we live in such a world where it's like, if, if, if I'm not getting it, then yeah. this person shouldn't yeah. how, get how it. How dare you, you get know? that? And then other people with God doesn't love gay people. Like, who are you to say that? God loves everyone. Yeah. God doesn't make mistakes. And as a human being, as a Christian, my job is to protect other people, especially the oppressed. That's my job. My job as a good Christian is not to condemn, but to accept. Not to put down, but to hug, to be there to hug someone. You understand how many times I was at a nightclub, drugged out of my mind, and I needed a hug? I just needed a hug. I yes. just needed someone to tell me it's going to be okay. I, I, I would have taken a lie. Just someone to say, hey, come here, let me give you a hug. It's going to be okay. I would have died for that. So if anything else, I'm here not to condemn, but to accept, to uplift, to give hugs, and to yeah. teach people pickleball and spread joy with a smile on my face. And I, I, I love this, Nico. <laughs> I know you're on a tyrant, okay? I just want to, um, I just love it because that's exactly what it's about. If we can all just lift each other up, you know, there's the saying that says, um, a rising, a, a, a rising, um, what's this? Rising tide lifts all boats, right? Yeah, and yeah. so I, I love this because if we can just help each other, support each other, and realize that that's all we really want as human beings is that connection and that um and that acceptance right so i love that because at the end of the day we all we all um we have no right to judge who are we to judge other people um yeah. we are here to to support each other and to love each other and of course you know uh, it is what it is but you have to be loving and kind and mm -hmm. compassionate you don't have to be, but that's and how it should be. Part. So, I love that, and I love, um, I love that that you've got this 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 vehicle almost that can give people some kind of purpose and yeah. mission because that's what a lot of people are just starving for is some kind of mission or purpose in their life. 
Yeah. So you never know when you're going to find that. Yeah. For us, yes. we just find it until we were 50. There is no age. It's, it's like no they, they tell you you have to know what you want to be when you're 18 you know. years old. <laughs> and yeah. how I look at it now is I want to be the person, if somebody tells me what their purpose or what their goal, I want to be the person that tells them that that's possible, that's possible. and to, to root for them. I never yes. want to be the person that tells them that, you know, no, you can't. Yeah. Because yes. Yes. that's not the person I'm going to be in their, in their story. And uh, for us, I just always say it's it's just better for the movie. Yeah. Those those people that were the you know yeah. the yeah. Debbie Downer. I, I believe that God, everything God, when God speaks to you, you can't not not listen. And if He hasn't spoken to you yet, He will. Yeah. There's a song I listen to. There will be joy in the morning. Yes, yes. And no matter what you think, He's there. He's real. And sometimes I believe me. I, I, I'm I'm a believer, and so I sometimes I'm like in the matrix, and I say I wish I didn't know what I know to be true. Sometimes I wish I was still asleep. I wish I could still watch pornography and and drink beer and have a cigarette and not care and eat excessively and just be lazy and just pretend like I'm going to die because that's what I used to do. Well, I'm going to die anyways, and who cares? No one loves me. And sometimes I, it's like this devil, this evil spirit tells me to think that way, but I know God's real yeah. and I know I have a purpose. And the harder it is, the more glory waits for you in the end. And if it was that easy, then anybody would be able to do it. So you have to remember that the harder things in life are the ones that are, the, those are the things that are worth fighting for. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I truly know that my son will see this or that or all of this. And if not, him, maybe my grandkids or my great grandkids, because the beautiful thing about the internet is once this is on the cloud, we're new, we're infants in the social media, we're babies. Yes, yes, yes. A hundred years from now, th what we're saying, this conversation will be listened to by my grand great grandchildren. Think about it this way: if it's I can go, back, beautiful. When, when, if I I have time now, I'm sitting in Florida and I have time. If my great great grandfather put something on social media 100 years ago, I certainly would see it. Yeah, you'd be watching it. Like my kids. Because you, Chris, you crave it. You crave Christy's, it. You well, try to grand, find out about Christy's your family. Grandmother, yes. Christy's right. grandmother wrote a book, and it's a short book about her life. And wow. we both read it, and it was about her as a, uh, she was orphaned as a little girl. and. It tells her story, how she got out of that. And, and this is important. Maybe someone, maybe a thousand people or a million people don't watch this today. But if just one person that loves me or maybe has a direct relationship with me, maybe my, maybe my son's grandkids or maybe his grandkids will look on this a hundred years from now and say, wow, that's really cool that my grand grandfather who had it rough and was lost Hold it together. Maybe my son. Maybe my son sees this 20 years from now or five years from now or maybe next, next week. week. <laughs> and it's, says, oh, it's my beautiful. father is a good man. So you, I, that's what pulls me out of the abyss. That's this morning. It was uh, I got up at like five o'clock in the morning and I said, I'm not going to run. I was tired. I worked at Home Depot eight hours yesterday. I, I worked out after I got home. I was just every part of my body hurt. I felt every bit of my 55 years old. And I looked in the mirror and it just blah, nothing, nothing, I didn't feel it. And every evil thing in my spirit was telling me to give up and quit and just not care. And I thought of the, just one little thing. It's like, this is all I have to give God. I'm not going to quit because I know that if I don't quit, it will happen. That's the thing. If you don't quit, you will achieve your dreams. It may take yes. 10 years. It may take 20 years. But so help us God. Christy and I will be in the Olympics one day. Yes. It's gonna I happen. love that. I oh, love it. So. Not, we and then today we played great too, by the way. So it's all happening. 
<laughs> it's beautiful, and I can and and, and like of course it's break fear, find freedom, and uh, it's it's a typical example of how you you broke fear, through fear from all those um, those addictions and things because that's what it is, right? At the end of the day, you 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 eat a lot, or you eat your sweets, or you drink yeah. your your vodka, or whatever you do, yeah. because of the pain and the fear within you. Yeah. Yeah. So you broke it, and that is amazing. And again how far you've come to this point. Thank so you. I must commend you. You guys are awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. We we're we're we glad appreciate. you're documenting it. We appreciate we're glad it. <laughs> to talk to you. Um, no, it, that's, no, that's very cool. It's funny because Noah is putting us, is, we, we are featured in this movie that's not going to be released maybe next year, maybe even the year after. But I truly believe that when that comes out, it's going to be a huge success. This guy's an Emmy Award winner. He's worked for ESPN. He's worked for HBO. His father nice. went out. So he's taking his time. He told me, he's like, Nico, every time I go online, I see you doing something else because he follows us because we're part of this movie. And he's like, he said the same thing. He filmed us while we were playing in the U.S. Uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in the U.S. Open. And he also filmed us just by chance. He happened to be where we were in the senior games. And... We lost our U.S. Open match, 11-0, 11-3. We won. Remember. We won our first matches in the in in the, the Florida State games, 11-3, 11-0. So he's like, you guys went from getting your butts kicked to kicking people's butts in one year. He was shocked. Yeah. He's like, wow, so you guys. No, I said, so we it's, look, we look much better. We, this he, and he said it. He goes, <laughs> you guys are getting better. And I'm glad that everyone's documenting it because at the worst case scenario, I know that my son or my grandchildren or their grandchildren, because of the, the nature, people don't realize that this will be online forever. Yes. It yes. will. Nobody takes anything off. It's just the internet is, um, I, how can I say, eternal? <laughs> <laughs> the internet's eternal if you want it to be. If you put it on YouTube, it can stay there forever. Yeah. And, it's a wonderful tool, and I think people should take advantage of it, and I think people should never give up. And that's what we're doing. We're never giving up. Yeah. Well, thank you. So that's a beautiful way to end this, um, this, this episode because yeah. that's exactly – don't give up because it's it's baby steps, baby steps. And, again, check out the playlist and see the growth. Um, it's, it's an amazing thing, and it's so beautiful to see. So congratulations again on your bronze medal. Congratulations on being on, on, on Naples and, and having that whole different um, feel for the games. And we look forward to watching you and seeing where this goes next. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you again for being here. Thank you. And um, many, many blessings to you. And hopefully one day we'll meet really in yeah, person. That would be awesome too. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you soon. Okay. Bye for now. Bye, bye.